Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 10th February 2018. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help in your trading you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu before we begin we go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold these tend to impact related stocks. We look at them using technical charts. A rising tide lifts all boats. And when the tide falls, the boats tend to go down as is happening right now. We keep an eye on the overall market's health using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also technical charts of the broad market ETF. We'll do the same this week. Aligning with an industry strength allows us to trade with additional edges and more conviction. We use the industry's rotation information from Q edge industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may look at some of the trades shared in Traders Forum and certainly look for trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodity study using oil. We are looking at the ETF US oil using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together, we call this at a glance template. This is the template that lets us decide if there is a trade opportunity at the right edge of the chart. And we are usually able to do that in a couple of seconds. That's why we call it at a glance template. In earlier market roundups, I had mentioned the existence of multiple bearish headwind signals. Whenever this potential reversal signal comes, our guideline is to at minimum protect profit using Q protection signal as stop order. And also if all the unambiguous checklist conditions are met, take bearish short trade setup. In this case, the unambiguous checklist for Headwind reversal trade setup was not met when the second bearish headwind came on this yellow candle. However, we would protect profit using protection signal. That will be a good idea. Eventually, on this magenta candle, that is the flow candle color, magenta bearish candle, we had a go with flow trend following short trade setup. That was the first opportunity to take a short trade after oil went up from quite low price point. And that go with flow short trade setup was very profitable. It hit the profit target in two trading days. On Friday, it fell further. The weekly candle backdrop color is now magenta, very bearish weekly activity is very high. On Friday, 
it dropped heavily however it is resting right on top of memory support line next week if it goes up from the memory support line it will give us a valid bounce long trade setup you may keep an eye on that okay let's use meta stock charts we are looking at gold using the gold etf the same weekly backdrop chart and the daily hop on chart gold also displayed a bearish headwind signal on this candle that would alert us we would protect profit using q protection signal from there it fell sharply the weekly candle backdrop color is magenta bearish and the week came down with heavy activity friday's activity was high the candle traffic light color is still red bearish it is near the yellow direction line it can be possible support line however this doesn't give us any potential long trade opportunity even if it goes up on monday or tuesday because there is no memory support line bounce long trade setup will not be applicable and it is in downtrend weekly backdrop candle color is magenta so we will not be able to take any trend following long trade either we may keep an eye on gold if the market continues to go down it may go up that is just a hypothesis we will not trade based on the hypothesis we will wait for a proper setup to come before taking the next trade in gold we are now going to study broad market depth and then we will come back to the broad market etfs every week we study market depth using nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index weekly charts and three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume because this study is using weekly charts and broad market indices it is to be used for long term investment decisions not so much for swing trading and certainly not for day trading one week ago both nasdaq and nyse displayed the bear release signal and then both of them dropped heavily for two successive weeks nasdaq bounced up on friday right from the memory support line it tried to go below the memory support and then closed significantly above that for nyse there were multiple memory support lines price could go below that and though it recovered on friday indicated by the long lower tail it still closed below both the memory support lines thereby breaking both of them in terms of internals new high lows which were the strongest internals when the indices were going up they continued to decline this week whereas all the other four internals went up and closed above zero slightly above zero but above zero at the end of thursday's market close i think all the six internals were negative but friday market bounced as nasdaq bounced from this memory support line as the market bounced the advanced decline and up down volume for both nasdaq and nyse turned positive new high low couldn't do that in fact new high low declined further showing that though market bounced it remains in a weak state 
in summary we can conclude that over longer term both the broad market ETFs are in uptrend they will take time before they come into downtrend showing lower highs and lower lows but they declined sharply the internals are neutral at present we'll have to see where the market goes there is a possibility that it will mount up from the memory support vicinity of both these indices and we will reach similar conclusion from broad market ETFs and further later from certain ETFs other non broad market ETFs industry ETFs let's start with broad market ETFs we are looking at SPY using the same at a glance template in last class I mentioned that SPY displayed bearish headwind and after that it started dropping I could take some very profitable put options trade around that time in the last class I had shared some of the percentage profits they were all much above 100 percent as the market went down further this week the percentages were even higher i have a habit of booking profit as the profit goes up and i did the same thing in last two weeks as well on Friday, you can see SPY came to the white direction line support and very precisely bounced from that. These are great day trade opportunities for people who are watching the Q charts on a longer time frame, like daily chart in this case, identify a support line and then use fine tune chart to precisely enter the long trend using options that would give very profitable long trade opportunity day trade opportunity on Friday it is too late to try to take short trade in SPY right now if SPY goes up and then tilts down again giving us a magenta flow candle that would be an opportunity to take the first trend following go with flow short trend qqq the nasdaq etf like spy qqq also displayed a bearish headwind at the very top then it declined beautifully on friday it bounced back up quite sharply it may give a bounce long trade setup if it goes up next week i can see there is a memory support line in the weekly chart therefore if it goes up next week it may give us a bounce long trade setup let us look at qqq once again this time for daily chart we are using the advanced hopon template which also shows the watermark support line in weekly there is memory support price close just above that and in daily it in fact bounced up from deep watermark level this is deep watermark level and price closed above previous days close Friday's close was above Thursday's close Technically, that gave us a bounce long trade setup in QQQ. The trade could be taken at Friday's close. If somebody couldn't take it at Friday's close, it is possible to take the trade on Monday using Q fine tune chart. Let us relook at SPY as well. In the daily chart, now we can see the watermark support level 
the deep watermark support level on friday price bounced up from there with heavy activity just like uqq friday price closed above thursday's close therefore spy has also given a bounce long trade setup as of friday dow jones industrial etf dia on friday it came very close to the weekly memory support line it breached weekly watermark support line but closed above that completing a false downside breakout in daily it came to the deep watermark support level and bounced up from there with heavy activity earlier it had displayed bearish headwind just like spy and qqq from there we could take profitable short trade and now it has given a bounce long trade setup we may take a trade on the long side now and profit from trades in both the directions iwm the last of the four broad market etfs that we study it also fell significantly on friday bounced up from deep watermark support level with heavy activity price closed above thursday's close all the four broad market etfs declined heavily three of them displayed bearish headwind and dropped from there IWM was the weakest one of all four so it dropped along with the other three however as of friday's close all of them have given bounce long trade setup therefore if you were holding profitable short positions you would probably exit all of them on friday's close swing short trades and instead take some trades on the long side i had some very profitable put option trade on the way down on friday in the beginning market was going down you can see that from the long lower tail and my profit was increasing further i was watching a movie on netflix and when the movie finished i saw that it has started reversing all the etfs came very close to the opening price in fine tune chart i saw they came back to the early range and probably above early range high so i closed all my remaining short positions almost all and instead i took a long trade on spy using call option i have only one bearish trade still open that is on shutterfly a stock that i discussed in earlier market roundups if we have time we may look at the stock and i may explain why i am still holding that short trade in fact i opened it on friday shutterfly is not a trade that i opened when the market was going down but i opened it on friday overall the markets dropped heavily and now only the media is saying that it is dropping dropping however that is too late for taking short trades right now and probably too late to start exiting long positions in stocks they could be done much earlier somewhere here using q protection signal if someone didn't exit at that point someone didn't protect profit or capital at that point i think it is not the time to exit right now there is a chance that market will bounce from here however if the market goes up somewhere in the value area and tilts down again that could give probably the second chance to exit stock long positions after that if the market continues to decline it will probably be too late q traders are probably out of their stock long position somewhere 
around this time using Q protection C. Few weeks ago, I mentioned in the market roundups that sometimes all the instruments we study went up. All the broad market ETFs, oil and gold, everything went up. This week the reverse happened, everything went down and everything went down with very high weekly activity. At the same time, almost all of them are at support in the daily chart and it went up on Friday, closing above Thursday's close. So it may be time to look for possible bounce up long trades. In many market roundups, I have mentioned that we can take very profitable trades by keeping an eye on longer term support. So if we are day trading, we identify the support, in this case support or it could be resistance for short trades. Identify support and when on fine tune, real time chart it comes to the support, goes back up from there, we can take extremely profitable reversal trades. That could be taken on Friday. Many of the broad market ETFs bounced up from there. What about this day? Tuesday. Tuesday also it bounced up precisely from the watermark support in IWM in this case. Now IWM or the other ETFs don't trade 24 hours. If we are trading futures or keeping an eye on them on Tuesday, we will see that E-mini futures precisely hit the Y direction line and bounced up from there. That was in the overnight market for USA. Let's have a look at that. This was Tuesday in the overnight session. E-mini S&P 500 was dropping, dropping very, very, very fast. And then it hit precisely the white direction line and bounced up from there. E-mini future traders who were aware of this Q support could take extremely profitable long trades. How much profitable? Let's have a look at that. On this day, the low was 2529 and the close was 2694. 2529 to 2694. 2529. 165 points. So, E-mini reversed from the very bottom where the Y direction line was there to the close. It was a distance of 165 points. Each point of Umini S&P 500 futures is $50. So using only one lot and very minuscule stop loss using real time fine tune chart. Each lot gave within one day $8,000 profit, $8,250. Now in Q standard way of trading, we will not be holding the entire position from opening the trade at the bottom till the close of the day, what we would do is probably trade at least two lots, quickly book profit on one of them at least, put a stop so that the entire trade is risk free and then let profit run and wait for the close of the day. Using futures, Tuesday's bounce could be traded extremely well. And we see that again on Friday, E-mini also came to the support and then bounced up from there. It could be traded using futures and on Friday it could be traded using the ETFs as well. In fact, on Friday it could be traded with many stocks on the long side when they came to support and started reversing. Either the stocks came to support and started reversing or the futures and ETFs came to support and started reversing. These were very profitable trades. The general approach is to look for longer term support and use fine tune chart 
to see if price comes there, probably creating a false downside breakout and goes up from there. The stop loss is very narrow and they give extremely profitable trades, especially now because the volatility is high. Emini S&P 500 futures also gave a bounce long trade setup on Friday. Friday's activity we can see is high. This is one reason why I exited all my short positions and instead took a long position. Though there was significant bounce on Friday, that was not enough to turn the sectors positive. Let's look at the sector analysis. Every week we study 11 economic sectors across three time periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to red bar. Blue bar performance of two weeks prior to green bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line indicates the sector went up. Any bar to the left of the zero line indicates the sector went down. Two weeks ago, all the sectors were positive, all the 11 sectors. That didn't happen for a very long time. One week ago, all the sectors turned negative. And that is the time in last market roundup, I mentioned that this may be the climax stop or capitulation. And that hypothesis came true this week. Again, all the sectors came down. And the sector's drops were enormous, ranging from 2.7% for utilities to 8.4% for energy. Energy dropped the most. So based on last market roundups analysis, those who protected long position did well and those who took short trades did even better. Friday's bounce was clearly not enough to turn the sectors into positive territory. That is one reason I will be cautious about taking many long trades right now. Instead, we may look for price going to value area and then tilting down from there, giving the first possible go with flow short trade in many of the stocks that were inflated for a long time, that were overvalued on charts and that were overvalued in terms of fundamentals as well. We look at some of those stocks and be ready so that if the trade signals come, the go with flow short trade signals will be taking it very promptly. What about the industries? The industries also couldn't turn positive. Friday's bounce was not enough. Let's have a look at that. In last market roundup, we saw only six industries could end in the positive. This week it became worse. Only five from home furnishing to advertising could end in the positive. So we don't even have 10 total industries that ended in the positive. If the bounce was forceful enough, we would expect more industries to turn positive, at least 10, at least 20 in more than 170 industries that we studied. That didn't happen. Therefore, I didn't make an attempt to drill down and look for long trades. On the other hand, the worst performing industries declined heavily. The market route is evident from the massive percentage decline of the worst performing industries ranging from 8.1% drug retail to 12.8% for oil and gas drilling. Four of the worst performers are in energy. These are oil and gas drilling, energy equipment and services, oil and gas equipment and services and oil and gas exploration and production. In fact, if we use QH and drill down from energy sector to its industries, we'll see 
all the energy industries went down. Not only these four, but all of them. There are nine industries in the energy sector. All of them dropped by between 4.3 to 12.8 percent. However, this is not the time to start taking short trades. From Q8, we can see the weakness started some time ago. Q traders could identify that very easily from Q8 industry scorecard and heat map table and would have taken short much earlier. Now, in fact, is a time to protect profit using protect profit stop and probably look for some long trades. I identified this stock Cloud Peak Energy CLD. It has given a bounce long trade setup on Friday. It went up heavily 4.4% on Friday, optimally valued in vital statistics. And though the industry declined, it has scored acceleration and has one of the best score heat map in QH. Let us start with QH. We start with sector, drill down to energy industries. Identify this industry, coal and consumable fuels, drill down to the stock and look at its fundamentals. Finally, look at its technical charts to see why I think there can be a possible long trade setups in cloud peak energy. That will be a live demonstration of the top down analysis that we do and that gives us very high confidence to take a trade. Every time we open QH, we can click the connect or download button. It goes to the universe that is Thomson Reuters icon, collects data on 11 sectors and more than 170 industries, analyzes them over 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 day, 5 day, 2 day and 1 day periods. For each of the periods, it assigns a score of 1 to 11, 1 being the weakest score and 11 being the strongest score. Also applies a heat map, magenta to the weakest, cyan to the strongest and a color gradient to all the ones in between. This heat map and scorecard instantly tells us which sectors are weak at present, the magenta colors that are energy, financials, telecom, which are relatively stronger. These are utilities, materials, real estate. It also tells us which ones were weak earlier, magenta, and then now turning stronger, cyan. Utilities is one of them. If you are watching the market roundups regularly, you know that we were tracking utilities along with others. Why utility? Because it was weak for a long time. So we were starting to look for potential turn around that may be coming because over five days as well as over 10 days it has turned cyan. If the market is bearish then every sector may go down with it. So we'll be careful about taking long trades. But there is a chance that utilities is going to turn around from here. Energy is the weakest one. We can drill down by clicking the drill down button. It will bring all the energy industries in the industry tab. Let's sort them over the primary five days period. It's the primary period because that is the period scores that we use to decide whether to enter a new trade both for swing trading as well as for long-term investing. Coal and consumable fuels caught my attention because it was the strongest for long time. We instantly know that from the cyan color coding. Then it weakened but over five days 
over two days and then over one day. It gained strength more and more. Score improved and the color turned cyan. The paste column shows whether the industry is accelerating. Again, bullishness is shown by cyan color. We see that coal and consumable fuels is accelerating both over five days and two days. So this may be a case where an industry was strong, dropped along with the market and as energy sector as a whole dropped, but now recovering strength rapidly, much faster than the other energy industries. We can click the drill down button again to drill down to the stocks of this specific industry. QH will retrieve the stocks of this industry. It's retrieving from Thomson Reuters icon that is same as Metastock Zenith. Let me take this opportunity to demonstrate another way that I could do the same top down analysis. In Q forum, if we go to Q site, then on a regular basis, we will find that the stock and industry scorecards are being shared. This is of use who are not using QH and QVital. Those who have QH and QVital, they can continue to use those because they have real-time insight. For people who don't have Metastock real-time or Zenith, they may use the scorecards instead. Coal and consumable fuels industry. In coal and consumable fuels industry, we can see CLD, Cloud Peak Energy, using the color coding. Instantly, we know in terms of relative valuation, it is one of the best valued stocks in this industry. It went up by 4.4% on Friday. From industry analysis, we saw that coal and consumable fuels were strong, weakened in the middle and started to gain strength, accelerating right now. Cloud Peak Energy is a stock that is fundamentally strong. This is Cloud Peak Energy using at a glance template. In the daily chart, it came to both the memory support line and deep watermark support line bounced up from there with heavy activity. If you notice the candle shape, you see that initially it went down from open, but reversed precisely from the support levels. And it went up much further from opening price, unlike the broad market ETFs. The broad market ETFs bounced, but they closed near the opening price. Therefore, Cloud Peak Energy went up more strongly than broad market ETF. This may be an opportunity to buy this stock with very narrow risk. Probably book some profit quickly and put trailing stop after that on remaining position to see if we can let profit run. Every week we study accelerating industries because they tend to be best performers in subsequent weeks. Coal and consumable fuels that we studied just now is one of the accelerating industries. Overall, the market is weak, so it may not be the time to start taking many long trades. However, some opportunities may be there, low risk opportunities, as we saw in case of cloud peak energy in coal and consumable fuels, which is accelerating. This may be one of the best performers in coming weeks. Decelerating industries is more interesting now because market is falling down. Internet and direct marketing retail and home entertainment software may give opportunities for shorting fundamentally weak that is overvalued stocks just as the industries start to roll over this possibility of rolling over is evident from industry score heat map 
internet and direct market retail this industry has some very strong stocks including amazon and netflix that went up 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 for many many weeks however both of them are overvalued in q vital and both of them declined heavily in last two weeks it is too late to take a short right now i in fact could take very profitable put options trade in both of them closed all of them on friday if now they go to the value area and tilts down from there it may give the first possible go with flow trend following short trade opportunity the same is true for home entertainment software activision blizzard ATVI and Take Two (TTWO) are also strong companies which were up very much. They were both overvalued in Q Vital. They both came down in last two weeks. If they go to the value area and tilts down from there, we'll again have an opportunity to take short trade at the very top of these stocks and also short trades at the very top of respective industries. This is Q stock scorecard. I will open Q industry scorecard also. Then we'll use this offline data to do the top-down analysis. We identified the decelerating industries that were of interest. How to find the decelerating industries? We go to the primary period five days space column. Short by that score. We see internet and direct marketing retail and home entertainment software are two of the worst decelerating industries. Why these two were of more interest to me is because they both were strong for a long time relative to the other industries we see here and then rapidly declined in score. When they did that, they took the stocks along with them including some strong stocks like amazon netflix tech2 and atvi let's look at the stocks of internet and direct marketing retail amazon is one and netflix is another both of them are overvalued we know that instantly from the magenta color on both relative value and internal value columns so the industries were starting to turn around and the stocks were overvalued the last thing that we need to look at is the trade setup on q charts let's look at both these stocks amazon and netflix this is amazon using at a glance template interestingly it also displayed a bearish headwind signal on q global chart on this day we could take very profitable put options trade at that time. If you are tracking Amazon, you know that earnings were somewhat around this area. Then it dropped, it tried to go back up and gave a bearish headwind signal. Next day, it gave a go with flow short trade setup. Close of that day would be probably too late to take a short. However, using real time chart, we could take a short trade somewhere in the middle of this magenta candle using early range breakout technique so we could take a shot either using the bearish headwind signal or the early range breakout on the magenta color candle both of those trades would give very large profit on friday it went down heavily initially hit precisely the yellow support line and bounced sharply right now there is no trade setup to late to take a short trade and there is no long trade setup there is no bounce trade setup or box trade setup right now on the long side if it goes up somewhat and declines again that will give us a go with flow short trade opportunity at the very top many people are holding amazon if it starts to go down it will disappoint them and one by one they may start closing their position that may further fuel the downward rally 
similar situation may happen in Netflix. In the last market roundup, I had mentioned that if this weekly candle turns bearish, that is with an upper tail and solid body, as it turned out to be, then Netflix may go down from there. It was already overvalued. It is still overvalued. From there, it declined enough for very profitable short trade using put options. On Friday, it bounced up. There is no bounce long trade setup. If the market continues to go down next week, maybe somewhere from the middle of next week, that may result in Netflix also going up and then tilting down again, giving us another opportunity to short Netflix at the very top. In all these cases, we are waiting for a low risk setup. Letting Amazon or Netflix to go up till down from value area will give us such low risk setup. However, these are very strong stocks. These are not the only stocks where we can take short trades. There are many other stocks which are weak and we could take short trades in them as well. We saw that home entertainment industry is weakening. None of the stocks are overvalued right now because they have already dropped somewhat. At the very top, they were probably overvalued. Now they are not overvalued. None of them are magenta but not optimally valued for these two stocks, Activision Blizzard, ATVI and Tech2, TTWO. Let's look at at least one of their charts. Let's look at Activision Blizzard. Very strong stock went up strongly. In the daily chart, it displayed successive bearish headwind signals. We'll be careful about holding long positions and protect profit using stop. That would be a good decision because it dropped sharply. Came to the lower boundary, bounced stop on Friday with heavy activity. There is no bounce long trade setup. It is already in a downtrend. So if it goes to the value area and tilts down, Activision Blizzard may also give a go with flow short trade opportunity. The weekly candle color is magenta, probably that will remain magenta when the go with flow setup comes on the daily chart. Again, another case where we will be able to short a stock that is up for long time. Stocks that are up for long time and apparently strong stocks as per public opinion, as per fundamentals also can also drop. Apple is one example. I had some very profitable Apple short trades using put options. I mentioned in last market roundup also that though the market was going up in the weekly chart, Apple was moving sideways, not able to go above the watermark resistance. Then it tried to go up and immediately came down, creating a false upside breakout. We could take a very profitable short trade right on this candle. This candle shape was very bearish. Candle color was also bearish. And it had already completed the false upside breaker. That ended up being extremely profitable trade. On Friday, it hit the memory support in weekly. Also the wide direction support in daily closed above that. There is no long trade setup. Apple seems weaker compared to Netflix, compared to Amazon, etc. If it goes up and tilts down, Apple may give again another go with flow short trade setup. We saw both from accelerating and decelerating industries, we could identify potential short trades. There are probably many other potential short trades that you can identify in the current market. But it will be better to wait for the proper signal, not take them thinking market will go down. At the same time, it will not be proper to keep taking long trades thinking there will be a V-shape recovery like had been in the past many times. 
Why I say that is because the sectors and industries couldn't recover. The bounces that happened earlier that resulted in V-shaped recovery, the industries and sectors turned positive, which didn't happen this week. I mentioned that there is one stock where I am holding a bearish position. That is Shutterfly. Shutterfly is in the same industry as Amazon and it went up very strongly recently. I think one week ago in the market roundup I mentioned it went up by about 40% in one week. And at that time itself I had mentioned that if it starts to go down, a put options trade may become very profitable. Shutterfly SFLY is a stock in internet and direct marketing retail, same industry as that of Amazon. However, it is not overvalued. I kept an eye on that as well. It takes only a few mouse clicks, so I always keep an eye on the stock's fundamental score. It is not as overvalued, nowhere near as overvalued as Amazon. So though people think Amazon is very strong, which is true, Relatively speaking, Shutterfly has a better valuation. Both of them were at very high level, at pendulum high. The industry is rolling over. So I decided to take a short trade in Shutterfly, irrespective of its fundamental relative strength. I based my decision based on the industry's decline from very top, from the overall market bearishness and from the possibility of the stock turning down from top in the technical charts. Let's look at the technical charts. This is Shutterfly. One week ago, it went up by 40%. That's a very large gain with extreme high activity. At that time, it was at long-term resistance. If we look back to the left, let me clear the chart and compress it. It broke above the long-term resistance where a bearish headwind signal had come earlier in the weekly chart. That bearish headwind was successful in bringing the stock price down. Last week, it pierced through that support violently with extreme high activity. Usually, when a bearish headwind is able to bring the price down, some selling may still be left at that price point. However, in this case, it peers through all of them. It is possible that some of the sellers will be now happier to sell at a higher price, not at this price of 60, but around 75. That is a hypothesis. If that hypothesis works out, then a put options trade will be very profitable. That was the basis of me taking the trade and also the fact that on Friday, it didn't go up. On Friday, we see that price opened and then came down. It did recover somewhat from day's low, but not as much as broad market ETFs. There was a bear release signal one day earlier, Thursday. However, Thursday's candle was indecisive. So we were not going to take any short trade on Thursday. And before Thursday, it was not having any bear release signal, so we were not going to try any short trade earlier. Friday could be the first possible day. To be clear, there is no Q trade setup because there is no watermark resistance at this level. The resistance is still far away at 60, and price closed on. Friday at 69.2. So I took a small put option trade. You can say it's a discretionary short trade. Looking at the fact that Friday it didn't go up and looking at the fact that one week ago it went up heavily by 40%. Small put option trade. All I can lose is the money I put in the put options. Even if it goes up somewhat and then later on goes down, I will be able to make good profit. Let us summarize, after displaying bearish headwind in multiple broad market ETFs and also in multiple commodities, all these instruments dropped significantly for two successive weeks with increasing weekly activity. However, as of 
Friday, several instruments bounced from long term support. That may give rise to a short term long trade opportunity in many of the ETFs as well as many stocks. However, the bounce was not enough to bring industries or sectors into positive territory, showing that the overall market continues to be weak. It may not be time to take many long trades right now. Selective long trades may be taken. And we may wait for potential short opportunities, many of them if the market starts to decline again next week. Probably after recovering a bit. We may look for that. I want to share several other ETFs, not broad market ETFs, but ETFs nonetheless that gave box long trade setups or bounce long trade setups. We could identify them using Explorer, both in Metastop or using Sonar in Trade Station. I don't have the data lists here. This is a new computer. I have not created the custom online data list. But I remember some of those industry ETFs. XLF is one. Financial ETF. XLF bounced up on Friday. It is bouncing up from this longer term watermark support line. That may again act as support. So it is possible to take a bounce long trade. There are other financial ETFs. Let's have a look at that. That is FAS. This shows a possible bullish trade more clearly. In weekly, it precisely came to memory support on Friday and bounced up from there. At the same time, it hit memory support in daily, watermark support in daily and bounced up from there. On top of that, it displayed a bullish headwind signal. We see the bearish headwind came at the very top and now a bullish headwind has come at long term memory support, watermark support in daily and also memory support in weekly. Looking at that, somebody could take a long trade on Friday itself near market close. If FAS goes up, that long trade, probably using call options, will be extremely profitable. I think first FAS is a faster version of XLA. It is possible that US inflation is going up. Next week, the CPI reading is going to come out. If inflation is increasing faster than expected, then it may be that interest rate will be hiked faster or more frequently in 2018 that may result in financials going up. All these are hypotheses. It's no harm to keep the hypothesis in mind. However, we'll trade based on actual information on the industry scorecard and also the stocks chart. There were other ETFs, non-financials ETFs also that gave possible bounce and box long trade setup. You may run QSonar on the ETFs to see there are possible bounce and box long trade setup in many of them. That is also one reason that I exited all my short positions except one shutterfly. That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Market is volatile and that gives many trading opportunities. You can identify them easily using top-down or bottom-up analysis. I hope you continue to do that in the coming weeks. It's always great to have you in this session. I look forward to having you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.